Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, we're going to go over Revelation chapter 15 and possibly chapter 16 too, just because chapter 15 looks pretty short, but we'll just have to see how things go. Um, we've been going through the whole book of, of Revelation as kind of a like a series. You don't have to watch it in order, but if you go to my playlist called Book of Revelation, you can see the other videos that I've done. And um, in addition to this series, I've done many, many, many more videos on the book of Revelation. I have a total of 58 altogether. So uh, I would recommend to check out this playlist. We go over so much information and it's all so good. Uh, before we dive in to chapter 15, this is the update on the Book of Mormon sharing challenge or the Flood the Earth challenge. We have a total of 5,242 copies of the Book of Mormon that have been shared and 495 people that have joined the challenge. Um, I'm recording this uh, on the 20th, so today is Thursday. I'm probably going to schedule this for tomorrow, so that's why this uh, shows as the 20th. All right? So uh, make sure to join this challenge. Whenever you do send out a Book of Mormon, uh, make sure to put a comment in a video or send me an email. Keep it very short and put hashtag flood so I can easily find it. Um, remember, you can easily share the Book of Mormon now using the Gospel Library app. Go to Scriptures, and at the top you'll see a Share button. And it's a specific app that just has the Book of Mormon, and it's geared toward people that are not members of the church um, to introduce them to the Book of Mormon. So it's very easy. Make sure to do it, and then let me know. Okay, so here we go. Chapter 15, Exalted Saints, Praise God in Celestial Glory Forever. Um, actually, that reminds me. I'm going to read this first in the Institute Manual. This is the New Testament Institute Manual for students. And it says here, Revelation chapters 15 and 16, seven plagues. Revelation 15 appears to describe what the religious, or sorry, what the right, okay. <laughs> Revelation 15 appears to describe what the righteous gathered in the first harvest will experience, whereas Revelation 16 seems to describe what the wicked gathered in the second harvest will experience. Okay, so that's kind of a context here. Okay, I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And as I saw it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Now, remember, in videos past, we've talked about the mark of the beast, according to the manual, and um, other talks that we've looked up. It's not a, it's not a microchip, it's not a barcode, it's not some physical device. It's simply... When you have the mark of the beast in your forehead, in your hands, it means that you have worldliness in your mind and the things that you do, your actions, are worldly, right? Uh, we've talked about the number 666, and there's a surprising number of talks in the Journal of Discourses that equate 666 to be the number of um, divisions within Christianity, uh, the different churches and stuff like that, because we know that there's only the church of God and then there's the church of the devil. That sounds harsh. That's just how it is. There's the great and abominable church and then there's the true church. Not saying that people that are part of other churches are bad. Okay. I always have to like give that little um, notice. Are you saying that other churches are bad? Oh, gosh, for heaven's sake. I'm not saying that all other all people from other churches, but they're not the true church. Okay, so anyway, the mark of the beast, six six six, just all these things. Okay, all right, let's move on. And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, "Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are there are thy ways, thou King of saints." Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou art, thou only art holy. For all the nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. 
And the seven angels came out of the temple having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with gold with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts uh, gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Uh, remember the four beasts. There's the four beasts and the 24 elders. Uh, that is not a prophecy of the future. It's something that John was seeing in the moment, just like Joseph Smith saw. He had the first vision. Christ and the Father were there. It wasn't a vision of the future. It was something that was happening in the moment. And so, and Joseph Smith said that the four beasts were actual beasts and that the 24 elders uh, were saints from the early church that were in, in the spirit world. Okay. Uh, just in case you haven't seen those previous videos. So let's go ahead and see what it says in the student manual. Okay. Chapters 15 and 16 work together. In Revelation 15, 1 and 7, John learned of seven destructive plagues that are to be poured out upon the wicked. Revelation 16, oh, spoiler alerts. Uh, Revelation 16 describes these seven plagues. The repeated use of the number seven may suggest that the plagues represent the completion of God's judgment against the wicked in the last days. Quote, for in the seven last plagues is filled up the wrath of God. End quote from Revelation 15.1. This is something that is continually, continually misunderstood <clears throat> by many who read the book of Revelation, thinking that you have to try and match up uh, events occurring on the earth with the seven this and the seven that, right? Trumpets and vials and things like that. Uh, not understanding that virtually all, I, I think all, Virtually all the numbers in the book of Revelation from everything that we've studied are mostly symbolic, whether it's three and a half or seven or whatever. Okay, Revelation 2, 15, verse 2, a sea of glass. John saw that the righteous would stand upon a sea of glass mingled with fire. The sea of glass represents the celestialized earth where the righteous will reside in the presence of God. Revelation 15, verses 2 to 4, victory over the beast. John saw that the righteous would, would gain victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name. In short, over all of Satan's evils and deceptions. Revelation 15, verses 2 through 4, uh, verses 2 through 4 illustrates a major theme in the book of Revelation. Uh, quote, there will be an eventual there will be an eventual triumph on this earth of God over the devil, a permanent victory of good over evil, of the saints over their persecutors, of the kingdom of God over the kingdoms of men and of Satan. Such is the theme of the revelation. If we fail to catch a glimpse of the theme, we fail in our comprehension of the book, no matter how many details we are able to understand. That's from the Bible dictionary for Revelation of John. Revelation 15, verse 3, the Song of Moses. And then it has a depiction of space here with shooting stars, I guess, and a planet with two moons. The Song of Moses was sung by the children of Israel following their deliverance from Egyptian bondage. Revelation 15, 3 tells us that the Song of Moses will be sung again by those who inherit the celestial kingdom in celebration of the Lamb of God, delivering them from the bondage of sin. Okay, and that's it for chapter 15. So yeah, let's go ahead and let's knock out chapter 16. Let's see what that says. So this one was about the saints and the ones that achieve exaltation, the celestial kingdom, so on. All right, now 16 is going to be for the wicked. Okay, the chapter heading says, God pours out plagues upon the wicked. The nations assemble for Armageddon. Christ comes, Christ comes, islands flee, and mountains cease. Okay. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, 
And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men uh, which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Again, I, I just want to put in my own commentary here. I don't think it's worthwhile. I don't think there's any harm in it, but I don't think that this is meant for us to be like, oh, okay, this must be talking about this sickness. This must be talking about that. Da 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 da. Although that's like fun, it's kind of fun to speculate. I don't think that's the the purpose of this, uh, because again, if seven is only being used to represent completion, right? Then there aren't really actually seven. It's just different things like this list of seven things are going to be happening on the earth. So anyway, okay. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and it became as the blood of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water say, thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be because thou hast judged us. Uh, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed uh, the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Here we go again with the Antichrist. Let's click on that. <clears throat> Antichrist, false prophets plural but it's okay we'll get into that and i've done a i've done a entire playlist about the antichrist okay for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of god almighty uh really quick so this is this is referring to armageddon and i actually did a video on this before about the euphrates so if I'm wrong, and if these are describing specific events, uh, there is one thing that's been going on with the Euphrates River. Euphrates River drying up. Oh, just two days ago. <laughs> the reasons and meaning behind the Euphrates River. This is from AZ Animals. Um, key points. The top reason the Euphrates River is drying up is low rainfall, along with droughts. Iraq and the surrounding area uh, also suffer from climate change and rising temperatures. More than 7 million people are affected by the river dry drying up. Crops are failing, which has led to around 800 families leaving the surrounding villages. In the Christian Bible, the Euphrates River is significant. When it dries out, it is a sign that the end times are coming. So I don't know who these people are, AZ animals. I don't know if this is like a, is this like a, it, it looks like it's some kind of just science-y type website. Um, let's just see if we can find something else as well. Uh, Reuters, this is November of last year. Uh, Middle East Fertile Crescent dries up as rains fail. So anyway, you, you get to the point. I already did the video on this. So if you want to look at this in more detail, I'll put the links for these two articles in the in the um, description below. So if it is if it is meant to be read that way, and that's okay if I'm wrong, 
then yeah, it could mean that that Armageddon is upon us. And, you know, just look at what's happening in Israel right now. It's kind of crazy. But anyway, let's continue. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. So gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Uh, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And this is interesting because Elder Bednar just uh, in the October General Conference talked about the marriage feast and making sure that you wear making sure that you wear the wedding garment. And uh, here's this right here: blessed blessed is he that watcheth. And I point that out because I have that as one of my um, misconceptions, common misconceptions of the second coming, where people occasionally, usually people that that aren't really in the second coming the LDS second coming community they'll say uh, we we shouldn't watch for the signs of the second coming we should focus only on the here and now and there's just scripture after scripture after scripture that commands us to watch you know we have Joseph Smith Matthew Matthew 25 Luke 12 first Thessalonians DNC 45 and here now we have another one Let's see, DNC 50, verses 45 to 46. And the day cometh that you shall hear my voice and see me and know that I am. Watch, therefore, that you may be ready. So why are we supposed to watch? So that we're ready. Look at, look at DNC 45, 44. And then uh, they shall look for me, and behold, I will come. And they shall see me in the clouds of heaven, clothed with power and with great glory, with all the holy angels. And he that watches not for me shall be cut off. So that those are some pretty serious uh, words right there. And uh, before I forget about it, why don't we just go ahead and add what we just read. Revelation 16, 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. All right, let's add that right here. Let's get rid of the footnote. Footnote A. Okay, this is Revelation uh, 16. Oh, I already forgot. Oh, it says right there, 15. 1615. There we go. Check it out. And then, oh, got to get rid of this footnote. Blessed is he that watcheth. Got to turn that red. Okay. There you go. All right, let's continue. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city, and by the way, I know everyone was thinking about this uh, when President Nelson said this in conference, when he was talking about the Salt Lake Temple and how in the Salt Lake Valley, there's not going to be a safer place than in the Salt Lake Temple. And I don't, I don't know. It may stand to reason that they're preparing specifically for this particular earthquake. You know, um, does that mean that we have to wait until the dedication for the second coming to happen? I'm not so sure. But I think once, at the very least, once some of the earthquake upgrading is done, I mean, it could probably happen right then, as soon as, like, the there's enough to protect the temple. I don't know. Just a thought. Okay. And the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon and great Babylon <clears throat> came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, 
and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. All right, so let's see what it says in the student manual. Revelation 16.1, the vials of the wrath of God are, pour, are poured out. In Revelation 16, John described the scourges and plagues that will be poured out in the final days prior to the second coming of Christ. These plagues are summarized in the following chart. Verse 2, first a noisome and grievous sore comes upon the wicked. Similar plagues are described in Exodus and Zechariah. Verse 3, second, the waters of the sea turn to blood, and all creatures in the waters die. Uh, see also Exodus. Verse 4, third, the rivers and fountains of water turn to blood. See also Exodus. Verses 8 and 9, fourth, the sun scorches the wicked with fire and great heat. And you have to wonder if maybe that, again, if that's happening now with climate change. If it's meant to happen, and it's currently scorching us. And there's people that die because of this. Um, let's see. Deaths due to heat. I wonder what will come up. Some statistical approaches estim estimate that more than 1,300 deaths per year in the United States are due to extreme heat. Uh, this is from August 2nd, 2022. Well, I wonder what it is worldwide. Um, an average of <clears throat> 702. Okay, each year there are 67,000 emergency department visits. Let's see, time up to 20,000 deaths a year in North America, maybe linked to hot temperatures. That's from July of last year. Uh, extreme temperatures kill 5 million people a year with heat. This is from July 2021. The Guardian. Let's see. Extreme temperatures kill 5 million people a year with heat-related deaths rising, study finds. Uh, more people died of cold than heat in past 20 years, but climate change is shifting the balance. I think I've actually, I think I've read this before, because this, this is really familiar. And, uh, okay, this is talking globally. Yep, so this is talking not just the United States, but globally. So, you have to wonder... Okay, verses 10 through 11. Uh, fifth, darkness spreads across the kingdom of the devil, and the wicked suffer pains and sores. Verses 16, or, uh, sorry, 12 and 16. Sixth, the waters of the Euphrates River dry up to prepare for the gathering of the kings of the world at Armageddon. <sighs> Again, like I said, um, maybe some of these are literal, maybe some of them are not. And maybe there's just more. It's not just limited to seven, but this gives you an idea of things happening before the second coming. Uh, verses 17 to 21. Seventh, there are voices, thunderings, lightnings, and great earth and a great earthquake. The cities of the nations fall. Babylon receives the cup of God's wrath, and great hail falls upon men. All right, Revelation 16:6. 6. They have shed the blood of saints and prophets. After John saw that the rivers and fountains of water were turned to blood, he heard an angel proclaiming the justice of God in pouring out such a fitting judgment. Quote, For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink. The angel's words of condemnation here are reminiscent of those found in 2 Nephi 26.3 and 3 Nephi <clears throat> 9 verses 5 through 11. And then a whole bunch of other scriptures. It seems that safety in times of judgment is directly connected to the acceptance of prophets. For more information on the blood of saints and prophets, see the commentary for Revelation 18.24. Well, well, we'll get to that. So we'll save that for a future video. Revelation 16.15. Blessed, blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. In Revelation 16:15, the Lord the Lord warned, quote, "Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame." When the armies of the kings of the earth approach, all who are ready, clothed, to flee for safety will not be ashamed of having to flee in nakedness. Th that's totally spiritual in nature. You know, it's like 
when you get to the very end, ho- however things happen, but when it comes down to it, whether it's uh, the cleansing of the earth by fire or whether it's not being able to attend the wedding feast, as things get really serious here, you're going to be, you know, there's going to be people that are the, you know, the, te- the five unwise virgins that are going to be like, gosh, dang it. If I had only spent more time on spiritual things, going to the church and um, progressing down the covenant path, you know? Okay. In a spiritual sense, keeping one's garments symbolizes the spiritual readiness that results from living in spiritual watchfulness and receiving the blessings of the temple. Many other scriptures exhort people to live with watchfulness. Well, okay. So that's like another way that you can think of watching. It's like, I think it could apply to both watching the signs of the times, being aware of how close you're getting, but also watching yourself at the same time, watching, watching yourself, making sure that you're where you should be. Okay. Furthermore, Elder Bruce R. McConkie taught that keeping one's garments also represents spiritual safety. Quote, to defile one's garments of the holy priesthood is to disobey the Lord's law and to keep one's garments is to keep the commandments and qualify for the robes of righteousness that clothe celestial beings. That's from Doctrinal New Testament Commentary. Revelation 16.16, Gathering in Armageddon. The name Armageddon is derived from the Hebrew Har Megiddon, Uh, meaning the mountain of Megiddo. The valley of Megiddo is in the western portion of the plain of Estrelon, 50 miles uh, or 80 kilometers north of Jerusalem, and is the site of several crucial battles in Old Testament times. How about we go there right now and take a look at the map? Yeah, let's do that. Megiddo, Israel. I don't know if that's going to pull it up. Yeah, it's right here. Megiddo is a kibbutz in northern Israel. Well, this might not this may not be what we're talking about. No, but that does seem to be in the right area. I've never really nailed it down. I've seen it like many times like different presentations and stuff and this seems like it's right. Let's just try this plain of Estrelon. Let's see if that pulls up anything. Yeah, it's like the same area. Look, Megiddo Aviation. <laughs> okay, this is probably the right place. So, like right here, there's Megiddo. But I guess that's the kibbutz. I don't know. Whatever. So you can see there's Jerusalem down there. There's Tel Aviv. It's uh, pretty close to Nazareth. There's the Sea of Galilee. And then on the other side, you have Syria over here. So, okay, it's by Haifa. That's where it's at. Okay. Um, A great and final conflict that will take place near the time of the second coming of the Lord is called the Battle of Armageddon because it will begin in the same locale. See Ezekiel, Zechariah, and then, okay, Guide to the Scriptures, Armageddon. All right. The battle that will begin at Har Megiddo will spread to Jerusalem. Now, what's interesting, you guys, and I I brought this up recently, is you had this uh, meteor over Israel. I'm wondering if, like, there's an actual, if they have, like, a location. Let's see. Let's just go to this, I-24 News. A loud explosion heard in large swaths of central Israel on Saturday was likely caused by a meteor. Okay, does it have, is there a location though? I want to know if there's a location other than just central Israel. Um, Let's go to Times of Israel. Let's see what they say. Here it is right here. Over countries center and north. I mean, that sounds like the area of Armageddon, of <clears throat> Megiddo, Armageddon. Okay, Israeli experts said an unusually bright meteor was, vi- was visible over the country on Saturday afternoon. Like I pointed out in that other video, 
that was Sabbath, with some observers pointing to have reporting to have heard a large explosion afterward um, over central and northern Israel. I don't know. Oh, I wonder. I wonder if they have it on the. Sorry, give me one second. Okay, I had to stop for a second and find the right place. And um, this is AMS. They track meteors, and they don't have anything for that that meteor or that fireball. So um, <clears throat> usually they, they'll have like a, you know, they'll have like a map that you can click on and see where it was, but not in this case. So. <clears throat> but as you can see, if it happened, like, say right here where my mouse is, okay, because this is, like, central and north uh, Israel. I mean, that's a, this is essentially pretty close to Megiddo. So you have to wonder about that. And I, I think that there is meaning in it. You know, the Euphrates River drying up, and then you have this meteor that happens over north central Israel near Megiddo, if not directly over it. Who knows? Okay, <clears throat> so Revelation 1620. Every island fled away. President Joseph Fielding Smith explained the physical changes that will take place when the earth is returned to its original state. Quote, We are informed that the Lord shall command the great deep, and it shall be driven back into the north country, and the islands shall become one land, and the land of Jerusalem and the land of Zion shall be turned back into their own place, and the earth shall be as it was in the in the days before it was divided. And it refers you to Genesis 10, 25. Let's just see what that says. And unto Eber was born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. All right. The notion prevails quite generally that the dividing of the earth in the days of Peleg was a division politically among the people. But from this word of the Lord, <clears throat> we gain the idea that the, the earth itself was divided. And when Christ comes, it will again be brought back to the same conditions physically as prevailed before this division took place. The sea is to be driven back into the north. The land is to be brought back as it was originally in the lands of Zion, America, and Jerusalem, Palestine, and all the land pertaining unto it, will be restored to their own place as they were in the beginning. The Savior will stand in the midst of his people and shall reign over all flesh. We have discovered in our study that the wicked, or all things that are corruptible, will be consumed and therefore will not be permitted to be on the earth when this time comes. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so really interesting stuff. And uh, I thought that this was pretty good. Certain things to think about. Again, especially with what's going on in Israel right now. Uh, really severe internal strife, talk of civil war. Um, tensions are rising in the region. Saudi Arabia has aligned itself, or it seems to be on the way to aligning itself with Iran and Russia and China. Um, you have this meteor over north-central Israel, which was probably close to Armageddon, um, which I think is significant. The Euphrates drying up. The war in Ukraine, which is a distraction to the West and the United States. And then China and its aspirations also distracting uh, primarily the United States. Things are getting very, very interesting and I think very biblical. But, like I said, the, the best thing that we can do is wait and see what actually happens. Um, you know, while we can kind of like look at different events and be like, oh, this is it, that's it. Well, it may be or may not. You know, the Euphrates drying up, could that be fulfillment of that scripture? Yeah, sure, of course it could. But maybe not. So we're only going to really know once it's all said and done. Okay, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.